Hello, welcome to the Junos Pi EZ Azure VSRX Configuration Learning Bite. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After completing this learning bite, you will be able to use Junos Pi EZ to configure a Microsoft Azure VSRX instance. Let's first learn a little bit about what Junos Pi EZ is. Junos Pi EZ is a free Python library from Juniper Networks that enables you to automate the management of Junos devices using Python. It provides similar capabilities to the Junos CLI. You can use Junos Pi EZ and Python to execute operational mode commands, manage Junos device configuration, upgrade Junos software, reboot, power off Junos devices without having to have an extensive Junos or Junos CLI background. A good way to learn Junos Pi EZ is through our Introduction to Junos Platform Automation and DevOps course and the Junos Pi EZ Developer's Guide. The Junos Pi EZ library consists of a series of modules. Some of the primary modules contain sub-modules. The example we will use, the example Python script you will see in this learning byte, you leverages the Junos Pi EZ config module. This module is capable of performing configuration options on Junos platforms. And so we will use this configuration module. It, rep it, it can create a configuration object class that can be associated with a device object and we can load and commit and roll back configuration. There, there are additional modules, of course, in, in the Junos Pi EZ library that can manage file system, you know, perform file system operations, transfer files, run shell commands, do software upgrades, power cycle devices. So again, the similar functionality to what's available in the Junos CLI. This is the example Python script that we will run. It's I'll just explain a little bit to you about it. The, the first part of it, we're just going to import the modules to you know, perform the functions that are required. And this is how the Junos Pi EZ uh, library is referenced, jnpr.junos. And, and from this Python library, I want to import uh, a device uh, object class. And also, uh, from the configuration module, I'd like to in, import the configuration object class. And, and you can write this script probably a hundred different ways, but in this example, you know, when these VSRX instances spin up in Microsoft Azure, I have them configured to receive a public IP address, and that's how we're going to connect to it. But that public IP address can change every time I spin up an instance. So I, I've imported the get pass module in here, and I've created some prompts. So when that spins up, I can look up the public IP address, and, and when this Python script is run, I'm going to prompt the user. Hey, what's the public IP address of that VSRX instance? And, and, and what's the username and password for your account to, to log into it? And then this is, we're using Python Context Manager, you know, with as syntax to kind of tie the device object and the config object together and provide some variables. But, you know, with the device object that, that we imported earlier, um, I want to associate that with this host. And, and, and these it, this information is going to be provided. This references these variables that we declared, right? The host name, whatever you know, the user puts in for the the IP address, the username, the the password. Now, here's one thing that's unique. Okay, Junos Pi EZ connects to Junos devices using NetConf over SSH, and by default, uh, that connects to TCP port 830. Now, think about this. I don't know your experience level with Azure, but when you spin up a VSRX, VSRX instance or any instance in, in Azure, it's associated with something called a network security group. And that is used to control the ports, the traffic that's allowed to reach that instance, the ports that you can use to connect to that instance. And by default, TCP port 830 isn't open. That, that's not available. But, but Secure Shell is. And so there's a couple things you need to understand that in your Python script, when it goes to connect, it won't be able to connect at TCP port 830 to your Azure instances, but I can, in the script, 
ask it to use another port that is open, or I can go modify my network security group in Azure to permit port 830. So one of the two, I just had it connect to a port that I know is open. I will show you how to configure the VSRX, VSRX instance uh, to also expect connections netconf on port 22. So that's something we'll have to do. And then um, I'm going to tie the configuration object and the device object. The device object is, rep is uh, identified as dev. The config object is associated with that device object. We want to enter configuration mode. Uh, CU will represent this, this value here. CU will represent the, the association of the configuration object with the device object. And then I can start using the configuration object methods like load. And this is the path to a file on my local administrator workstation. Now, here's another thing that's important about this. You cannot do a load override. I'm going to connect to our VSRX instance. It's freshly spun up. And you're going to see that Microsoft Azure has a required initial configuration that allows that instance to function in the Azure environment. And if you override, overwrite that configuration, you can lose contact with that VSRX instance. And so whatever configuration you load has to merge with the existing required Azure configuration. So that's important. Please know that. And then and then commit it and we should think positive and we'll see a nice little hey the configuration is loaded successfully message. Now look this is a basic script. What I did not include in here is any type of exception handling. Right in reality you'd want to know like if the connection could not be established or I could not log in successfully or the commit failed, you would normally include in a Python script some exception handling. But for this learning byte, I just needed to keep things short and as simple as possible. So this is the script we'll run. It's called Azure Deploy Config.py. Let me show you now. This is the environment that is actually spun up in Azure. I used a Microsoft Azure Resource Manager and an ARM template. Uh, to dynamically spin this up. Here's our VSRX instance. There's really uh, four interfaces that have been, you know, set up as part of the build process. There's the management interface. This is the interface we'll connect to. This has been assigned a public IP address. And then there's three what we call revenue interfaces. This is a public interface that, you know, customers would use, traffic, you know, would use to reach resources that we have spun up. Uh, there's a Giggy001, Giggy002. Uh, I also spun up a couple Linux servers, so this could be an example that I'm going to spin up VSRX and some resources in, in Azure so we can, you know, run our applications. So this is what's there. there. You know, there's IP addresses, there's subnets, there's route tables, there's interfaces. And so this is what's running. So I'm going to connect to this VSRS, VSRX instance, and we'll kind of take a look at it and look what configuration is there. Uh, then we're going to run the... Azure deploy Python script and allow Juno's Pi EZ to put a more complete configuration on that VSRX instance, and it includes security policies and IP addresses and NAT rules. Okay, so I'm going to connect now and we'll take a look. This is my administrator workstation, and I have the Azure portal open, and these are all of the resources that are currently running in my Azure account. There, we mentioned the interfaces and the you know, the Linux servers that are running, and there's, there's, there's route tables. And down here toward the bottom, it's kind of listed in alphabetical order. We'll see our VSRX. I, I gave it a host name of VSRX1. I'm going to click on it to view its properties. And the, the property that I'm really kind of most interested in right now is it was when it's spun up, I asked that it be assigned a public IP address. Now I'm going to copy that address to my clipboard. Okay, let me use this terminal window, and I'm going to secure shell into that instance. Let me paste the IP address there. And log in with the password I used when I created my Azure account, and I'm connected to my VSRX instance. Now I'm going to run a show configuration command. And this is the configuration, the default config that's applied every time you spin up a brand new VSRX instance inside of the Microsoft Azure environment. There's a this is the account that's automatically created, and this configuration has to stay. If if this configuration is lost, 
this this Azure you know provision configuration group, you can lose connectivity with the instance. And, and so there, here's the management interface, the, the FXP0 interface that we, we mentioned a little bit earlier. That's, that gets a, a dynamically assigned uh, address. There's some default you know, security policies present, but this isn't the configuration that I want. Uh, let me run a show interfaces command here. And I want to show you the, the Giggy 000 interface. Right? I don't know if you remember seeing that. Here's Giggy 001 and 02. These were the interfaces that were in the diagram. We all we saw the FXP0 interface. Here's a dynamically generated private IP address. And Azure handles the NAT, you know, from the public to the private IP address. That's how we're connected right now. But you know, I need to configure those interfaces. I also need to configure some security policies. Now I could right now just load a config. I can enter configuration mode and load a configuration, but I want to use automation. I want to use some Juno's PyEasy and some Python to do that. Now, I will have to enter configuration mode because there's some default settings that are close to what I want. Let me show you this. Under Show System Services, oops, I spelled it wrong. This is where you enable management services. There's a key service that I need to have enabled to allow Juno's PyEasy to connect, and it's a service called NetConf. Juno's PyEasy establishes an SSH connection to the managed device, and then it uses NetConf to exchange the commands. And so I have to enable that. And another peculiar thing, and I mentioned this earlier, let me enter the command, set system services, NetConf, and I have to enable SSH. Now, by default, if I just enter the command to commit this configuration, it's gonna listen on TCP port 820. Remember, that's not open by default. Microsoft Azure won't allow traffic going to that port by default. So I'm gonna change the port to 22, which matches the port I defined in my Python script. And, and so now I'm gonna commit this. I'm gonna commit that change. I'm gonna exit my connection. Oh, you know what, let me do this a different way. Let me just open up another terminal window. Now the Python script that we looked at previously, it's written in Python 3, but these examples will work in either Python 2 or Python 3. Juno's PyEZ supports both versions. So I'm gonna go ahead and run the Python script. Called Azure Deploy Config.py. Now remember that when we looked at the script, there were some prompts that we defined to allow the get pass utility to prompt us. So I'm going to paste in the, the VSRX IP address that we used, and then the username. And if I think positive at this point, it should connect, it should authenticate successfully, and load the device configuration. So I feel pretty good about that. Let me go back to our SSH session that we, we had with the Genos device, and I'll run a show configuration. Command. And let's see if there's a little bit more complete configuration on here. The we remember we did a load merge. Remember how important that was because that kept the 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 Azure group in here that had, for example, our, our credentials, so we wouldn't get logged out of the device. And what I should see more of in here is more. I have some NAT rules, so we can translate the traffic. There's source and destination NAT rules included in that configuration that we just loaded. There's security policies. Now these are pretty basic wide open security policies for, for kind of a lab environment. But I had to configure some NAT and, and remember those interfaces, the Giggy 000 and, and 001, you know, we, we configured those interfaces as well. And so now what that would allow me to do is I could run, for example, a show interfaces terse command. The same command we ran earlier, but now at this point, I actually have IP addresses on those interfaces, so they're ready to forward traffic. We have security policies that permit the traffic and also some NAT rules. So once the instances are spun up, if you enable NetConf from the correct port, at this point forward, you can simply use Juno's PyEZ to load whatever configuration you desire on your devices you know, using automation. In this learning byte, we used Python and Juno's PyEZ to configure a Microsoft Azure VSRX instance. Thank you very much.
Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.